welcome back, Life Sciences. I'm glad you're back. I hope you didn't get too scared about all those terminology. Remember, you've probably got a textbook or you might have access to a variety of resources. Go back, right, if you might have missed something, go back to this module, watch the video, look at your textbook, and just try and clear yourself up, right, on the different terms that we've used. Okay, so we're looking at the different groups that we put plants into, and it's all dependent on their different criteria. So we looked at a group called Bryophyta, which we looked at moss, and they were very small plants that didn't have any vascular tissue. Then we looked at plants that did have vascular tissue, but they had spores reproduce. And there we looked at, they were called Pteridophyta, and that's where we looked at the ferns. Now we're going to look at the next two groups. Right? We're going to look at gymnosperms and we're going to look at angiosperms. Now guys, when we look at these two groups, right, both of them have seeds. So both of these, these are going to be the gymnosperms. They're the one characterized by cones. Angiosperms are characterized by flowers. Now each of these no longer rely on water for fertilization. They pretty much adapted to a life on land, to terrestrial. And what they've done is they've produced this thing called a seed. Now what a seed is, it's different to a spore, is we've got inside our seed, what we've usually got is food. And then around the seed, we've got like a coat. So it's almost protected. We're on land, we don't want to dry out, so what have we got? We've got our own food, and we've got this nice coat around us, right, that protects us, stops us from drying out. And when conditions are good, that seed will germinate and it will become a new plant. So both the gymnosperms and the angiosperms are going to produce a seed. Okay, now also both of these, like the fern, their sporophyte generation is going to be the major generation. So let's have a look. What do I mean by that? Okay, I want you to have a look at this. When I talk about the gymnosperms and the angiosperms, right, they are going to have a male sex cell, a gamete. And you guys know the term as pollen. So I want you to have a look over here. This diagram are male pine cones. And when you, the wind blows or you shake them, gives off all these tiny little things called pollen. And this is pollen. Underneath the microscope, pollen has a whole lot of different shapes. Okay? So here we've got the cone, and this is the male cone. And the male produces pollen. This is a flower, and we're going to look at different models coming up. This is the male part of the flower, right? We're going to call it a stamen. Ha, men, you see? Men, the men, the stamen. And this is the pollen, and there's the pollen, right? And what they're going to do is they're going to go onto the female. Now, a female, there's a variety of structures, but basically what happens, right, you are looking for a little egg. There's the egg. And this male is going to land on the female, and he's going to form, look at this, it's called a pollen tube. The guys have to do all the work here. I'm so sorry, that is your job. And he has to form a pollen tube to try and get his male sex cell into the female. Right, he's got to do the work. Doesn't use water. Doesn't use water like the fern and the moss. He's going to have a special cell called pollen and he's going to land on a special structure of the female and he's going to grow a pollen tube and he's going to get to the female. Right. And when those two, when they fuse, what is the end result? They are going to make a seed. They are going to make a seed. Not a spore, all right, a seed. And that is a really important concept for you to understand. Okay, guys, look at gymnosperms. We're going to look at the pine needle, the pine cone. Look at these nice thin green 
leaves, but they're nice and thin. Why? To stop loss of water. The thinner the leaf, the less water I lose. Why? Because where do I live? I live on land, right? And I don't want to lose water. So my leaves are nice and they thin and I'm going to lose less water. What else I'm going to have? I'm going to have deep roots. And I want you to have a look here. This, do you see this? This is the female, guys, not the male. There's the female. And look what is sitting naked. You see, that's why it's called a gymnosperm. There the seed is lying open, or the female part, the female gamete. She's lying open. Here we go. She's lying open on the seed. And the pollen comes. All right. There we go. This is where she is. The pollen comes, and it joins with the female, and the cone closes. And then when it's ready, it opens up. Look here. It opens up, and look what falls out. The seed. See how nicely it's protected? Nice coat. This is a wing. Why is it a wing? What does the seed need to do? It needs to fly. Fly away. Go and find a new place. Fall to the ground. And what am I going to make? I'm going to make a new pine plant. Hey? A new pine tree. How's that for cool? All right, guys. Then my angiosperms. Those are my flowers, and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail when we look at the flower as a reproductive structure. Okay, now flowers, what do they have? Now have a look. You're going to learn a lot about this later on, but a flower here is the female part of the plant, and what happens is the pollen comes and sits on her, and he grows a tube, and he fertilizes her, now have a look at the shape, round, round. What does the female become? The ovary of the flower becomes the fruit. Yes, guys, fruit is the female ovary. Most people go, go, gross, that's just disgusting, right? But that's what it is. And what's inside the fruit? Very important seeds. And those seeds are protected, right, by a nice seed coat. So what have we got when we get seeds? We've got gymnosperms and we've got angiosperms. And their seeds are nice and protected. Why? They don't dry out and they are adapted to a terrestrial environment. They're much more comfortable on land. Okay, now guys, the last concept that we need to look here. This is quite a challenging one, and it's called the phylogenetic tree. Now, what a phylogenetic tree is, it shows us, I want you to have a look here, it shows us the evolutionary relationships. What do I mean by that? Basically, it shows me, remember I said about that base model? This could be time over here. And it shows me that this is my common ancestor. And each of these dots is where a particular characteristic, all right, develops. So let's, for example, over here, all right, what happens over there? I get vascular tissue. So all these tissues underneath here don't have any vascular. They are old. They are the older plants. And here, all of these. None of them have vascular tissue. Now what happens, what do I, what happens do I find? I produce vascular tissue. Now if I've got vascular tissue, ferns. Right. Now I have another evolutionary moment. I can produce a seed. So if a seed is produced here, it means that this group produce seeds and they produce, all right? They've got vascular tissue. They've got everything. So when we're looking at a phylogenetic tree, you're looking at the evolutionary ratio. You're saying to yourself, okay, these, these are young. What have they got? They just got simple things. And then it branches out. Okay? They've still got the simple things, but now I've got an added feature. Okay? What are examples here? 
then I've got this feature and that feature, and later on in time, another feature came to be. So ours was no vascular tissue, moss. Okay, simple. Ah, oh, vascular tissue, fern. Ah, oh, seeds. Ah, oh, gymnosperms, right? Ah, oh, flowers, angiosperms, right? So we're looking at basically what happened first? What was the feature that developed that made it more able for other plants to be able, right? Was that a better feature to be able to survive? Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have a look at a few questions that we can ask you on this section. <laughs> 